Here's my Churchill Cub that I'm doing the motor swap on, VFD, etc. Um, so I've taken the old motor out. It's a dual speed motor, 950 stroke, 1450, the 400 volt three phase, only um, one horsepower. <laughs> it's huge. Um, what's really good is that somebody seems to have done this swap before because I've taken the motor out. Here, here are the uh, mounting holes for the factory motor. Well, the plate was already drilled for a 100 size motor. Um, these belts were really slack originally. The guy did show me it running, but not under load. They may have slipped, I don't know. I'm not sure how long he'd had it for. Um, but they were quite slack. And then I sort of looked at the side, and I don't know, this is all new to me. I don't know anything about these things at all, really. Lathes in general, never mind old lathes. Um, they, obviously, they weren't this slack. They just, they're hanging, hanging loose now. All right. Uh, what seems to be good is that you can adjust the, the height here. So this essentially is your belt tension, I suppose. You just adjust the motor height however you want, really, within reason. But it looks as though it's uh, it'll go up a bit higher than that. So a good chance that uh, these belts will still do the job. Not, I believe belts are cheap anyway. Not too sure how to measure them. Probably a piece of string, maybe. Don't know. But anyway, I think those belts might be okay. What I'm a bit unsure about is uh, at first when I saw the belts were slack, I thought it was because there was uh, tension I'm missing here or something. You see a shaft here, a keyed shaft, which is very worn, or you know, it needs a bushing or bearing or something. And I thought this was for a tensioner, I thought, because it didn't seem to do anything. I didn't know what this was here behind it, but it didn't seem to be connected. This looked as though it had like a plug in, you know, like a screwed in plug in the end. Well, actually, upon closer inspection, the two are connected. You can just about see inside there that there's a small shaft turning. And um, yeah, I've realised that this is an oil pump seems to be. You see the oil line there. And it goes down through the cabinet. Through the cabinet there. Um, I put the screws back in the cover here. I'm not sure if you can see it through there anyway. Hang on a minute, let me see. Yeah, I'm still not totally clear on where it's going. But I do know that We've got oil lines like these oil are rare though. I'm not really sure what the deal is here. Because we've got like a barb fitting here. That's what you'd call it. Well, just a copper olive fitting, I suppose. Um that's not connected to anything. And then it's on some sort of just some sort of T block here that's got it's got a threaded fitting that's on a there's a spring in it, so I don't know if this is like a, a relief valve or a pressure valve or something. It's supposed to be, maybe there's supposed to be a ball on the end of that spring. I don't know, maybe there is a ball and it's still in there. But it seems to, seems to I don't know what, what do you call that fitting. It's like an air fitting, an airline fitting. So mate, I don't know. I'm not sure where that's going here. Yeah, I'm really not sure where that's going. I think I'm gonna to have to buy the manual for this machine. And this could be air for blowing off chips or something, who knows? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if they're the same pipe. Oh, well, yeah, same sort of fitting, so I guess it must be. No, so, okay, so they're all oil lines, then, I suppose. And this is an oil pump that's not connected. But then, you know, it's not getting industrial use, so... I don't know what the deal is with uh, oil in these things, though. I hear people say you got to oil them, you got to use the right oil, and all that. Well, 
there's uh, an oil level indicator here which is showing us full or overfilled maybe even uh, in the head but there's also an oil level indicator in the uh, screw cutting gearbox I gather it's called I'm really new to lanes I'm about a week in and that's not showing any oil so I don't know where you would put the oil in but more importantly how you would drain it out and also if it was on an oil feed like this and a pump then what's the deal does it pump it in and pump it back out or what is this some sort of evacuation thing where you, you know, I don't know vacuum causes it to oh, god knows do you, apply, do you apply a vacuum and then it sucks out all the oil so that you can put fresh oil in mm. anyway I have no pulley for that shaft and it looks to be a bit knackered so uh, maybe just don't worry about that um, I have realised none of my tools work on this I knew it was imperial so everything's in bloody inches and fractions of inches which is uh, alright I can cope with that for threads per inches and stuff like that and there is a table for the change wheels for doing metric and a table here for what would change wheels to use. Some of the gears have got a few teeth missing. Somebody seems to have fabricated uh, some replacement gears that look like fibre of some kind. Pretty good. Um, probably explains why this one is a little bit wobbly because it's fibre. But I've seen watched watch a few YouTube videos of people making gears and you know. No big deal, is it? Somebody can, you know, you can get replacements anyway. It's not a problem. Um, yeah. So anyway, motor's just sat there, just as a as a test fit, really. Just gonna look at getting a uh, pinion shaft pulley. Sorry. This is too big. So shaft size isn't on the new motor. It's not big enough. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm just not sure about the oiling business really. Uh, yeah, probably just need to buy the manual from Tony Laves for 30 quid. Why not? I think I will do.